Let me play the first four bars for you again. See if you can pick out the ways I'm shaping the phrases and making the repeated notes feel a little less static. First off, while I am doing a kind of forte, I'm not going all in as loud as I can play. I don't think this sounds very good to play it like that in general, but I also need some space to grow in volume for a couple of climactic moments towards the end of the piece. Second, notice that my repeated notes are not all the same volume, and I'm not doing this, for example. I'm letting the last notes in the measure drop off ever so slightly to give it a little shape, almost like they're kind of echoing at the end. When I get to bar three, however, I'm keeping the volume up to emphasize the feeling of movement we're getting from this drive to the half cadence here. Now, one thing that I chose not to include in this manuscript as I was editing uh, the original was any marking for pedal. But realistically, using pedal for a piece like this, especially coming from someone like Gerlit, who is a romantic composer, um, is pretty much an assumed practice. And when done correctly, it not only helps to sustain the notes and open up the harmonics, but also lets your fingers breathe a little more easily in that they don't have to stick to the keys so much as they might when playing the finger legato of, say, a Baroque piece. Now, this is why we can have fingering like you see here in measure four in the right hand. Notice this duo of five ones going between the sixth on C and E um, and the sixth on D and B um, without any pedal there, this ends up being kind of an unavoidable little gap in the sound. Whereas when using the pedal, you can contentedly play the first um, set of notes and then move your fingers to the second while the pedal holds the sound. Now make sure that you're lifting and repressing the pedal for each of those chords in the measure, um, otherwise you'll get quite a messy sound indeed. Now well, from there, we continue with the same idea for measures five and eight, now leading up to a true tonic cadence. So from measure five. Notice that the fingering for that cadence in measure eight, um, the two, two four going to the one five, um, is still built as though we're using finger legato to sustain the notes instead of the pedal. And I actually like to ditch the pedal at that point to get a slightly cleaner sound. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.